Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, last night, y'all had the circular mo motion worksheet. Uh, there was, what, 10 questions on it or something like that? What questions do you have about this? So we have number four you need me to go over. What else? Number nine? Okay. Uh, we'll do four in just a moment. Any others? Four, nine, and eight? Okay. So here. Well, that's, that's enough for now. So we'll flip over to nine. All right. And nine says that we had a two kilogram object that's tied to the end of a cord. I need to work a better system. Oh, well. Got a two kilogram object that's tied to the end of the cord and whirled in a horizontal circle of radius four meters, completing two <coughs> revolutions in six seconds. And then it says determine the velocity of the object, the acceleration of the object, the pull of the object, and what happens if the cord breaks. All right, so let's look at that. Uh, Number one, as with all of these problems, just draw a little picture. It'll be way easier. All right, so we got a cord, and then we have an object, our original, on the end of the string, and it's going around, and it says that it's moving at two revolutions every six seconds. What is that that they're talking about there? They're talking about frequency, right? Because they're telling you the number of revolutions in a certain period of time. But that's not the standard, okay? Because the standard is revolutions per second. And this is six rev or two revolutions in six seconds. So all you have to do is you have to simplify that, right? So in order to bring this into hertz, or the standard unit of frequency, we're just going to take two and divide it by six. And so that's 1 over 3, so the frequency is 0.333 repeating hertz. That's the first thing that you've got to do in order to do this problem. Uh, so we have a frequency. We know that the radius is 4 meters. Uh, and does it give us, give us any other information? Yeah, it says the mass, right? So the mass of the object is 2 kilograms. So we have a radius of 4, a mass of 2, and a frequency of 0.33. And then it has that they want us to get the velocity of the object, right? Well, what kind of velocity are they talking about? Yeah, they're talking about tangential velocity, right? And we have a bunch of different formulas for tangential velocity. But one of them that we have, the basic one, says that the definition of tangential velocity is equal to the circumference of the circle, so 2 pi r, divided by the period, the time it takes to go around that circumference. But what did I tell you you could do with period and frequency? Yeah, because they're inverse of each other, I can just replace the t. I can get rid of the t, and I can put an f any place there's a t. The only trick is that the f has to go on the opposite side. So here I have a t on the bottom. So if I want to replace the t with f, then I get rid of the t, and I put an f in, but I put it on the opposite side. So here the t is on the bottom, so the f has to go on the top. I mean, we could do a bunch of algebra, but you're going to end up in the same spot. So now we have velocity tangent is equal to 2 times pi times r times f. So our tangential velocity is 2 times pi times r, which is 4 meters, f, which is 0.33 hertz. So what does your calculator tell you that the uh, tangential velocity is? 8.4? 8.4 meters per second. Okay, and then it, it asks us to go further, doesn't it? It say, says, what's the acceleration of the object? Right, so centripetal acceleration is nothing more than the velocity squared divided by the radius, the velocity being the tangential velocity. Well, we just solved that in the last part. 
So now we just plug in our 8.4, divide that by our radius. Our radius is 4 meters. And you get what? 17.6. And what's the unit? Yeah, meters per second squared. And then last but not least, <coughs> they're asking for the pull of the object. Excuse me. So what is the pull of the object? They're asking for centripetal force, essentially. I mean, what, what you really have, I mean, you have the string, and the string is pulling on the object, so that's tension. And then you have the object, and according to Newton's third law, if there's a force on the string on the object, then the object has to exert a force on the string. And so that's what it's talking about. But we know that the force from the object has got to be equal to the tension force because of Newton's third law. And so I know that the tension force is going to be equal to centripetal force. So centripetal force is equal to mass times acceleration, centripetally. We can use the easy one here because we already know the centripetal acceleration. So don't make it hard. So our mass on this case was 2 kilograms. Our centripetal acceleration was 17.6 meters per second squared. And so our centripetal force comes out to what value? 35? 35.2? Newton. And that takes care of everything, I think, just about. Oh, it says, what happens if the cord breaks? Well, what happens if the cord breaks? Yeah, it takes off, right? It goes, just like when I was whirling that ball around, and I let go of the string, it boom, took off straight across the room. It's going to do the exact same thing. If I cut the cord, the object is going to move off tangent to the curve. So it's going to move off in a line tangent to the curve. That's all you've got to say. All right, so that was 9. All right, and then we asked about 8. Is that correct? All right, so we'll do 8. 8 says it takes a 900-kilogram racing car 12.3 seconds to travel uniform speed around a circular track, radius 90 meters. What's the centripetal force acting on the car, and which force provides it? Right? Well, that's a lot like the warm-up that we just did. All right? So we have a car. It's 900, so the mass is 900 kilograms. The time, what well, says that the time to go around the circular track is 12.3 seconds. So what is that? Period. That's period. Because period is the time it takes to make one lap. So that's 12.3 seconds. Uh, and then it says it has the radius of 90 meters. And then what's the centripetal force? Okay, so we had a couple of equations, but if you remember from the front, right, we've got this equation here that says the centripetal force is equal to mass times 4 times pi times r. We have r and divided by t squared. So that's what we're going to use. So we just have the centripetal force is equal to 4 times pi squared times r divided by t squared. And it's just plugging in the values, really. So the times mass, you're right. So our mass is 900 kilograms times 4 times pi squared times r, which is 90 meters. Let me know if I go off the page. Uh, and then we're going to divide that by t squared. Well, that's 12.3 seconds squared. So when you put that in your calculator, what does it tell you the correct answer is? 
21,137 Newtons. Did somebody else get an answer vastly different from that? Okay, so then we'll go with that. All right, uh, let's see here. Now, but it does say which force provides that centripetal force. And but from the warm up, we probably figured this one out. So which force is it now? It's a force of friction. That's how tires work. The force of friction. If you have a car going over a, you know, an icy road and they turn the tires, the car keeps going straight. All right. Uh, and then we had four. Four is the one with Professor Brown hanging out on the end of the clock tower. Okay. So here we have the big hand and the little hand, right? And Professor Brown is hanging from the clock tower. He's really strong because when he goes around the other side, then he's going to be, uh, never mind. He's going to do a handstand on it, I guess. Okay, but that's not really the point. What's the point here? Well, the point is that he's hanging from a minute hand. Right? If you didn't know that, you wouldn't have enough information. But since they go out of their way to make sure that you know that it's hanging from a minute hand, then there's some stuff that you know. Like, how long does it take the minute hand to get around the clock? 60 minutes, right? So I know that it takes 60 minutes for that minute hand to go around one time. So what do I know? I know the period. Did I go over this yesterday? Yes. All right. So the period is 3,600 seconds because that's how many seconds are in an hour. If I forgot, I could take 60 minutes times 60 seconds. I get 3,600. Uh, and then... It says that the radius is 4 meters. So I have R is 4 meters. And then it asks for our centripetal acceleration. Now, this one is a little bit more challenging because the equation that, we, that I've given you says that we have the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. But they didn't give you tangential velocity. Okay, uh, so what we have to do is we have to use something else. Now, we did get the equation that the centripetal force is equal to mass times 4 times pi squared times r, all divided by t. And you might recognize that Newton's second law says that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So if you get rid of the mass, what are you left with? You're left with the acceleration. Well, I got the exact same here because it's, it's the same situation. I have force is mass times acceleration. So my centripetal acceleration is equal to 4 times pi squared times r all over t. Yes, t squared. Thank you. So what, uh, once you put that in your calculator, what does it tell you the correct answer is? So you get 1.22 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that's meters per second squared. Now, does that make sense? Does it make sense that it is a ridiculously small number? It kind of does. Think about it. The last time you looked at the minute hand on the clock, did you actually see it move? Probably not. Not unless you're superhuman. All right? Or you stare at it for a really, really long time. Okay? If you stare away from the minute hand and go back to it, you can see that its positions change, but you cannot actually sense its motion. 
it moves too slow for us to perceive motion out of that hand. So if it moves that slow that you can't actually see it moving, then the acceleration's got to be really, really small. So that, that number makes sense. It's OK that it's small. It's still right. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put that away. And uh, we're going to go ahead. I'll pass out the quizzes, and then you can work on the quiz.